Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to Reynolds Outdoors. Today we're going to be doing more hunting rifles. We kind of started off the last video starting with the budget build. Now we're going to get into the little, uh, the price here. Um, hunting rifle range, well hunting slash marksman, long range. We'll get to that. All the above, yeah. But but really this is, you know, we're still kind of hanging around that, that hunting rifle set up and we're going to do kind of a compare and contrast very two very similar rifles but um, both come with pretty i'd say significant differences and and uh, you know accessories and and all and whatnot but but wow i see a lot of carbon fiber here on the counter parker once you start pick one start with it and <coughs> let's well well you cough all over me oh yeah <laughs> so i'll start with the waypoint springfield just came out two years ago now it's their model 2020 it's a Brimson 700 style of action, uh, so you got that 90 degree throw, you know, uh, trigger tech trigger, but you can change it out for whatever you need. Uh, it's got an AG Composites carbon fiber stock. They do make one with adjustable comb, but we don't have those, uh, but that is an option. It's got QDs on both sides, front and rear, and it's got M-lock on the bottom, so you can pitch your bipod where else you need to fit up there. Uh, it's threaded 5 8 by 24, you can suppress it, no problem. It comes with a big attendee base. Good to go. It's a uh, zero MOA, but zero MOA base looks like uh, AICS compatible mat, compatible magazines, which is cool. I know some folks, you know, hey, I don't want to lose my magazine. Well, you know, yeah, keep up with your stuff. Uh, <laughs> but if you lose it, <laughs> it's we, easy. We do keep. Yeah, we yeah. do usually keep those in stock. Yeah, they're they're mag pool, so they're relatively inexpensive compared to the actual actual Action International mags. It's it comes with a three quarter minute guarantee. It's really a hybrid between a hunting rifle and a target gun yeah it's got the ergonomics of like a some might even be a prs gun ergonomic wise it's got that 90 degree grip mm. so you can you can run your thumb right here on the side like a lot of guys are going to do but it's also light enough you can still carry it in the field and it's not a burden the whole time so so you said three quarter inlay for the layman to kind of let's touch on so that that's a little bit a three quarter inch group at 100 yards with good ammo and a good shooter and a properly mounted scope so you gotta have all your ducks in a row for it to be able to do that but just factory ammo, it should be able to do at least that. You know, give like a federal premium or a barn, something like that. So propping up on the hood of your truck, you're guaranteed to shoot. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> no, yeah, you use a lead sand, slant sandbags, all that good stuff when you're zeroing in. But yeah, we hear it all the time. Yeah, anyways, but yeah, that's there's a lot of cool features, man. Um, some things I like, you know, on these stocks, we've touched on this in the past about you know sling attachment points and all that. The QD cups are that's awesome. You know, it gives you you know, both let right and wrong-handed shooters, so you can hook your slings up, no no issues. Um, that M-lock rail is awesome too, because you know Macpool does make some pretty uh, pretty dope uh, bipods. Yeah, they come in at a good price and they're light. So yeah, they're not Atlas price. At least well, they're still super expensive. Yeah, about 300 bucks <laughs> yeah. when I got mine. So so that's that's cool. That they're thinking about that and you know incorporating a lot of those cool features that you're seeing on you know all the modern ARs into hunting rifles, bolt action rifles, and um, so that's awesome. And lightweight, oh yeah, carbon fiber. Uh, did you touch on the trigger? Yeah, uh, it's a trigger tech. Just their standard kind of trigger. A lot of guys are using Christians and use a trigger tech. Um, it's cool. Yeah. Let's show that bad boy. It's not great. I'm not a huge trigger tech guy. I like my Bix and Andy, but it's a little bit different price point. But, so yeah, um, Springfield Waypoint, <laughs> um, very solid rifle. When this thing first came out, man, I you know drooled all over it. Great, great feeling rifle. Um, I've have been checking, you know, seeing what people say online about it. it. Tends to do what it what they guarantee it to do. Yeah. And having a guarantee of that is great. So you know, if, if you've exhausted everything and that you know to do to, to get this rifle to shoot accurate, and it's not shooting the way it's supposed Let's to, do. three yeah. quarters. Um, they will definitely take care of it. And we've seen, and other companies are offering that that guarantee as well. So I do like the bolt knobs, and it is, you know, that 700 platform. It's just you can do it. You can you shoot the barrel out. You can get a new one pretty easy. You can want a different trigger or different stock. You can do pretty much anything you want. Now, one caveat with that is the Picatinny rail. Now there is a pin back here that indexes in the receiver, so you're pretty much stuck with what you got as far as that's concerned. But it's a good Picatinny base. It'll do everything you need to. So adding a adding a 20 MOA base is you I don't know you there probably is one floating around I'm not 100 sure on that hmm. but for the a 308 this application yeah but so you should be modern scopes you should be enough elevation 
for most things. And then both rivals we're talking about, you know, has this feature. But the 700 action, I, I love the safety placement on these rifles. And I've touched on it in videos a long time ago. But just being able to quietly, you know, click your, your you know, rifle off safe is it's pretty awesome. It can make a difference in a hunt, you know, that can be too loud. A lot of the snap, you know, it's, they're gone. Yeah. But little things like that. So, yeah, so that is the, uh, that's the waypoint. Awesome, rig. awesome rig, great stock. Um, love the grip angle. I love that. Yeah, that's 90 degree grip angle. Feels great. Yeah. And of course, you know, threaded. You can put all your favorite, you know, cans on the end there. So, all right, moving on. So the Christensen Ridge Line. Christensen's done a great job here. You know, we sold just so many of these rifles. Um, and again, they come with a guarantee. This one's not quite three quarter guarantee. It's a really. sub. They, so they say Christensen will do sub in a way. Yeah. So that's anything from .99 to below. So it's kind of a wide range, but you got to if you think about it from a hunting standpoint, within 500 yards, a one inch group is more than acceptable. Yeah, for most anything. And I mean, I know these rifles can achieve, you know, three yeah. quarters or greater. I mean, I've, you know, shot the 20 inch um, ridge line with, you know, 308 with 178 grain Hornady, uh, and that it it stacked them up 100 yards, no problem. But Again, and this thing is significantly lighter yeah. than, than so that's the waypoint. It's the FFT model, so that's, that came out this previous season. It, it is as light as the last generation Ridgeline Titanium. So they, they went to this, what they call a Flash Forge technology stock. So it's essentially a carbon fiber stock. They drop about a pound. The floor plate's carbon fiber. The followers carbon fiber. The bolt knob's carbon fiber. They, they really cut as much weight as they possibly could. They also changed to a, a, a directional brake instead of that. Radially ported one, uh, more than with they shoot about the same, it's just more of an aesthetics thing. So it's not, it doesn't save your shoulder as much grief as you think it might, but no, I mean, they don't recoil that bad, yeah, they honestly. Don't, they don't, they really don't. I've, like I said, I had the 20 inch ridge line, the you know, the OG ridge line, and it and it's not bad at all. I mean, they, they are lightweight, I mean, but but it, it really isn't terrible. But you run a suppressor on it, it's you know it's even better so but yeah carbon fiber everywhere oh my gosh this thing is significantly lighter but you don't get all the cool um you know you don't get the qd cups in the stock like you do in the waypoint obviously you got the traditional um just north and south tipping but um old school studs there but for hunting rifles you know purposes set up i mean you're gonna have to be able to carry it you know like your granddad to the did to the stand and back no problem um yeah so, carbon fiber. Yeah, carbon fiber. <laughs> and really, the, the big difference, I mean, price-wise, they're right there pretty much together. It's like I think 100 it would, bucks. Yeah, pretty much 100 bucks. Yeah. What it comes down to is do you want a strictly just a hunting rifle or do you want something you can do a little bit of both with? That's w really what it comes down to. Uh, the, the, the Ridgeline FFT, great shooting gun, great for hunting. I don't want to shoot it all day. You know, even, I mean, it is not bad, but the ergonomics and the convenience of having the detachable box mag, Having a little bit more built up comb, having the, it already has a Picatinny base on it. Easier to put a bipod on. Yeah, and, and doing it. long range shoot, I mean, this one is kind of kind of that halfway in between, you know, hunting and and uh, long range shooting. So Another thing with the waypoint, it has the, uh, the the wire EDM raceways. So they're a little bit slicker typically out of the box, but if you put, by the time you break in your ridge line, it'll, the action will be super smooth as well. Yeah. So yeah, and that wide range of calibers, I mean. Now that, so the advantage to the ridge line for that, you have a long action and short action, a bunch of different caliber options. The waypoint right now is short action only. So you got 6.5 PRC, 6 millimeter Creed, 6.5 Creed, and 308. That's it. Uh, there's supposedly there's supposed to be a long action model coming out. I've been hearing that for a year now, so we'll see if it shows up or not. I have faith. We'll see. <laughs> so yeah, guys, let us know what you think. Um, what would you prefer? Do you prefer the just the more traditional hunting stock, but you know, and the lighter weight of the Christensen, or do you kind of like the more high speed approach of the, the white point? What do you think, Bart? What do you like? Well, I, it's on you. It's on me? It's on you. I, I took the third option. I bought a Fierce. Oh, <laughs> this guy. This guy. Got to be different. Well, mm. I don't know. I kind of like the detachable box mag myself, but I do see the merit in, you know, if you're going to be the only thing on your back and walking a good ways. Yeah, this is yeah. some, some long range stuff, walking wise. Yeah, and sure. shooting. It's just application based. Depends on what you want. Well, I guess, that's well, kind of an evasive answer, but really, <laughs> that's what it comes down to. Yeah. 
So yeah, not doing too big a deep dive on any one in particular, just kind of doing a compare and contrast and, and uh, two very similar rifles, but they do have, you know, like I said before, they got some, some different features for, for different folks, so you know, different strokes, right? Always. But, all right, guys, well, thanks for watching. Please comment, like, subscribe, all that cool stuff. We really appreciate it, and see you next time.